Self-Publishing Podcast, episode number 143. This episode of the Self-Publishing Podcast is brought to you by 99designs, the online marketplace that helps you get outstanding book cover design at an affordable price. Start your custom design today at 99designs.com slash SPP. Enjoy a free power pack upgrade valued at 99 bucks. Welcome to the Self-Publishing Podcast, where if you want something done right, you've got to do it yourself. And now, here are your hosts, three guys who are down with OPP, Johnny, Sean, and Dave. Hey, everyone, and welcome to the Self-Publishing Podcast, the podcast that follows three full-time authors as we attempt to change the face of indie publishing. I'm Johnny B. Truant, and my co-hosts, as always, are Sean Platt and David Wright. Uh, feel the need to say that this is not advice again after doing AMC Live yesterday and attempting to point out that that was part of our pre-roll, which it is not. Uh, used this to be, is not advice. This is not advice. No, I'll stop listening right now. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, it's been a good show, everybody. How are you guys? Um, oh, yeah. Well, uh, how about, how about that? Local um, I, I need to mention... Hold on, I had a bunch of stuff here. So I, I need to mention that, um, and I, w we won't go into a lot of detail because you guys are probably getting tired of it, but um, we have the, the early bird deadline for the colonist session uh, of the colonist summit in Austin, Texas, the 18th and 19th of April. Um, the early bird deadline is passed, but that does mean that we do now have payment plans. So if you're curious, uh, sterlingandstone.net slash colonist. And there are six spots left, so there you go. Um, all right, what's new in the world of optimization? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> is that how you start all conversations? Um, yes. W w what is new in the world of optimization this week? Did we do anything? I, I'm, my weeks are running together. What, what's different this we week? Wanna, do we want to mention, um, do we want to say anything about the results of the book book promo? Uh, yeah, sure. I think people really care about that. Okay, go. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're you're watching the dashboard so much more than me. I think you probably have more insight into this. Uh, it went well. All right, so that's about it. No, All right. well, well, I don't. I don't want to get into the nitty gritty. I don't want to get into the nitty gritty. No, no, no. I don't want to get into the nitty gritty of all that 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 stuff. But it it um it, it went up to. It didn't. It didn't soar as high as uh, as some of the other things we've done. Um, again, I would attribute that largely to the the recently realized fact that we probably have the wrong cover on that book, and um, we will fix that before we do another promo. But um, it got up to about. Do you remember how high it got? It was in. Was it? I don't even remember at all. It it didn't make double digits. It didn't no, get into I, the top one hundred, but it got close. I want to say like one fifty. I, I want to say 179 was that's the number in my head, but I don't, but I don't know. But I, I do think that that is a very, very good um, example of a cover that is a pretty piece of art, but it doesn't look like a book cover. It doesn't convert. I, I see Dave has an "I told you so" in his eyes right there. Well, Dave has um, also been smirking at comments or something over there the entire time. No, no, no. I, I, I was trying to, 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 to tweet. Uh, that, that we're on, uh, but yeah, I was laughing because I did tell you so from the very beginning on that beam cover. You told us about the cover, did you? It just goes oh, to show yeah. that I apparently Sean and I to. had many conversations. Yeah, but he tells us about everything. See, that, that's what Dave still doesn't realize like, is oh. that when you hate <laughs> everything, it's just like no, it I didn't just, hate it. I right. You're gonna need to you, you're gonna need to pick and choose the things that you tell us we're doing stupidly, Dave. Because if it's everything, <laughs> then we're never gonna but, hear you when then, you're right. But then when the sky's falling, you might, I might not tell you. Because even a broken hater is work. Even a broken <laughs> hater is right twice a day. That's the expression. Right. So, so, but, but yeah, I, I think that it's a nice piece of art. I, I still do love it. I especially love it up close when you can see the texture and stuff. But whatever. Nobody's seen that on a thumbnail. And it's not doing the job of communicating to a reader what it is. But but I do think that the conversion is pretty nice from um, from the beam to future of sex, which does have a great uh, conversion happy cover. So um, I think the plan at this point is to get beam season three out and um, and and run you know and we'll get new covers for. Have you written that one. yet? 
season. No. No. no, it keeps getting postponed by um, other things that are quite important. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we 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 were supposed to start that on January fifth of this year. That was the plan, um, and, and that didn't happen. And we're hoping for March, <laughs> but we just a few things have come up, um, and and that is Johnny was actually trying to um, reassure me yesterday during our story Aww. meeting that. Um, mm-hmm. Not that it will get done, but that it won't be as difficult as season two was because we built a lot of muscle, is what he said, um, in that time. And well, Johnny so, is good at building muscle. Love, <laughs> love muscle. Yeah, no, he said. He said the, this book is like my abs, and and <laughs> so yeah. Um, the beam season three hopefully will not because season two was was hard. Season one was hard, but in a different way, just because it was it was new for us. All we'd written beyond. You know, before that was Unicorn Western, which was so so different. Um, but but yeah, we've we've done a couple million words since season two of the Beam. So there's there is a lot of muscle there. Um, and I'm I'm just I keep dreading it because it's I'm not dreading it. I'm very excited about it. But I also, you know, I know that it's going to be hard. And he was saying, no, don't worry about it. Well, it'll be great. So hopefully in March we'll get to that. But we're going to redo the season one cover and the season two cover. Get a new cover for three, clearly, that so they all look good together, and run another promo. And I'm positive it will convert even better this next time. We have some comments. Yeah, so, oh, I was going to go on about. I'll do the comments after the comments, the, whatever that meant. Well, uh, Shoreen? I was. I'll go on. I'll go on after the comments. I have more okay. to say on the um the the book club stuff. Uh, Tammy Labreck, I believe that's how you say the last name. Uh, first time watching live, you bitches better bring your A game. <laughs> As you can see, we, we did start, start with, with it with our D game. Uh, Tom Hinton says, if you're suppressing Dave, how can he say I hate you all and truly mean it? Uh, that's fair enough. That's uh, hmm. and Robert yeah, that's Meisner, uh, who pointed out on Twitter, thank you very much. Uh. He said you could optimize your Canadian pricing, right, Dave? Uh, so Robert tweeted to us earlier in the week, uh, said, Collective Inkwell, your Canadian prices are a bit insane or something to that effect. Um, and I looked, and we were letting Amazon um, auto-match all, all of our prices on our books. And they were pretty high. And I looked at other people you know, that, that, that we were running with, and th- their prices were matching their U.S. prices, and the, the Canadian prices were a bit higher than they used to be. Uh, you know, that whole economy thing and the dollar versus <laughs> Canadian. What is a Canadian? Uh, the loon? I don't know. Well, you know, with, with Canada, with Canada um, being in the European Union and having that value-added tax, I think that's a... <laughs> <laughs> We are the experts. Well, isn't there America, there's America and then other, right? I mean... No, I, I don't. Not think really that. VAT on there. I'm not sure, but um, but yeah. So I went and lowered. I think it's really it. unfair that we should have to pay a value added tax when we're adding very little value. That is true. <laughs> if it were a value added tax, we'd have to pay a fee. But yeah, we we change our prices for all of our seasons. I I didn't go and do like all the single episodes and stuff because. Yeah, but that's a really good example of something to optimize because you know you could be missing out on a lot of traffic because. I mean, you, you don't want to be too expensive. Um, and if that traffic is coming to your page and people are curious, you may not just be missing out on the sale of that book. You could be missing out on that reader. You know, if they don't try you the first time, then, you know, you, you, you've lost okay, Well, th- This just goes to show you that there's no way to win, okay? Because <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for finally acknowledging that. <laughs> because I, I, have, I have been... Removing that, like we've been doing a lot of um, a lot of optimization lately, and so I've been in dashboards, republishing stuff, all this stuff, and um, I've been removing the price matching on everything because it's just like it it's it's so high maintenance to say like because the we, we would we would have something fixed like the British pound, and then um, there would uh, there'd be a you know, I don't know, currencies change, like, every day. I've heard that this occurs. And so, like, they'd be wildly off, and so I just said, fuck it, like, I'm tired. I don't want to come in and monitor my prices. Like, just let everything match. If it's off by... Because the the um, argument that... I know Mark makes this, Mark uh, Lefebvre at Kobo makes this argument specifically about Kobo in Canada, is since U.S. and Canada prices, uh, currencies are usually very, very close or within a buck or so, um, 
if you have something that's you know 299 in America and it ends up being 309 in uh, Canada like go ahead and make it 299 so it you know it has that 99 cent thing or or the other way around if it's 289 make it 299 and um, so I've always kind of done that and and so we did that and then you go back in and it's like well shit it's it's way off now and they did that the VAT thing with fucks everything up and so I've just been saying let everything match and I don't give a shit because I don't want to come and monitor it and now Dave's saying you got to go back <laughs> so it's it's you can't win there's no way to win folks. Well, Canadians no, are understanding, so I doubt. No, everybody mean. though, it's everybody. Like we were, because if it was close, we would go ahead. They've always know. taken up for the Canadians too. Well, I'm moving there, so. <laughs> if um, Dave wants to be further from us when we move south, we would, like I moved to Austin, and Dave's like, okay, well then I need to clearly go north. Oh, um, I'm going far ass north. <laughs> he's gonna Dave be would like in the North Pole if he could. He's gonna be in that at 30 days a night. Like that's he got real excited when he heard that he thought it was a travel uh, movie. <laughs> Thirty <laughs> days a night, I'm sold. I um, live there. What, what big deal? A couple of vampires fit right in. All right. Um. So let me let me just f follow up on the beam stuff too, because one of the things like, um, with a book bub promo, it's almost worth doing it, even if you have absolutely nothing else going on, um, just because like they pay for themselves pretty much right away. Like it's and. They just do, and um, yeah, we never lost money on a book, <laughs> a book bub uh, promo. Right, and they pay for themselves usually within like the first day or part of the first day. And you're making sales if you're on multiple platforms. You're making sales on <clears throat> Nook and Kobo and Apple. Um, you know, we had eighty some sales on Apple, and like we, I think we've had eighty some sales on Apple the rest of our history on Apple. <laughs> so like having it in one day, it's like oh okay. And um, but but what we did was we lowered the price of season two, which um, is also up at like fifteen thousand right now. Which you know, like considering that it was much lower than that, like that's that's a really good rank. There were um, thirteen sales of that overnight. Like I woke up this morning and I was like, season two sold thirteen at, at five bucks. Like that's I got cool. that in Slack with an exclamation mark. <laughs> because we haven't optimized anything. We're just like, okay, well it's out there. And um, future of sale, future of future of sex, and the girlfriend experience, which is the future of sex book two, both continue to tick along really nicely too, which are related um, worlds and cross-linked. Like they're in there also bots. One of the things we wanted to do, um, we just sent to the um, to the realm and sands list. We sent the beam promo because what we we stack we stacked everything up. We had a buck books ad. We're gonna have um, Matt from Buck Books on today actually. And um, in you know 20 minutes or something, 15 minutes, and so we had we had Buck Books, we had uh, uh, Kindle Books and Tips, we had E-Reader News Today, we had BookBub. I had seven days of ads, and then on the eighth day, right before we raise the price, like okay, tell our list too, so you stagger them out, and hopefully we get that um, you know continued elevated price. Then Amazon kicks in with their promotion sort of thing, and so we email our list and um, Lexi's list got it too because the future of sex is in that world and so those titles are tied together really nicely now in the also bots so one of the beams also bots a prominent one is the future of sex because we sent both titles to both lists and a lot of the people bought both of them and um, so that I think is getting some cross pollination too back and forth the future of sex also has the beam uh, pr I think it's first, and it's also bots. Yeah, which, so that's which that was a very big part of this whole strategy. Like that was one of our m primary goals. wasn't just getting the sales and getting that that elevation in ranking, but actually populating also bots on both sides. Yeah, um, this is an. I should probably mention this to Matt when he's on because we had a buck books ad for um, uh, for 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 future sex a while ago. And um, so all of Lexi's also bots for that were like time management and paleo living. And it was like, <laughs> oh, I think that's because, you know, they, they got the buck books ad and they, they, they bought the, and so it was just like, it was the least aligned also bots. So um, they're finally starting to populate in a way that makes sense. And But the one that I want most, the one that never happened before when we re-released, when we released this the first time, was the future of sex I want to show up prominent in the also bots for the beam. And it, it never did. Because if you like the beam, you would like the future of sex as long as you're not like offended by a few racy scenes. So 
anyway, so that's that. I'm really, really pleased by that. Uh, <clears throat> what else we got? What else we got? Oh, um, I'm I'm allowed to announce the thing that um, James sent us the first thing, right? Like the can we talk about this with the the, the beam and the audiobook? I don't think Not, so. I can't talk about the first thing. Okay, well I I won't. I'll be safe then. But there's something cool I, going I, on with beam. I, on I think I think I think we probably wait. I think I don't know. Okay. I can check the email real quick. But okay, well we'll 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 announce it. We'll mention it next week then. If okay. Um, do, do you guys have cool stuff? Remember, like, do you have something awesome to share? I have something. I awesome. listened. I listened to the podcast where you mentioned that that would be a good idea, and and when I listened to it, I thought I don't have anything, and I'm gonna forget. So <laughs> don't you always have awesome stuff though? Um, well, maybe you'll think of something awesome. My 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 awesome thing is pretty simple, uh, but I I started watching. Um, I didn't start. I actually finished the whole first season of a show that I just think is really good. Um, it's called Masters of Sex, and it's a Showtime serial, and it's just fantastic. It's just really, really good. It started out kind of slow, and I didn't know if I did get all that much. I like the um, I like the questions it asks. It actually doesn't ask that many questions. It, it answers questions that were asked a long time ago, but it's about the, the, um, the scientist, uh, Masters, it's Masters and, and Johnson, who, who did a lot of... Um, a lot of the the sex discovery and a, and a lot of work that nobody else was willing to do back in 1954 is when it takes place, and um, it's just really really interesting how taboo all of this stuff was to talk about. Like you couldn't talk about a female orgasm in public, and you know we've come a long 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 way. Uh, but the show um. is <laughs> the show is really just fascinating because it's it's like a period piece. If you like Mad Men, you'll you'll really like this show. It's, the same kind of vibe. Um, it's Mad Men with TNA. It's Mad Men with a lot of TNA, but but the but it's it doesn't feel gratuitous. It feels exploratory, and um, it's just it, the writing is great, the acting is great, but the the main lead I've never seen her in anything else before. But you're talking about um, yeah, she's she was she was Jason's girlfriend for a while in True Blood. And she was oh, in that. Oh, that was that's J. J. Abrams. right. That's right. What she was the J.J. J. Abrams movie? Yeah, the monster one. I forget the name of it. But Super like, 8? Like, no, no, no. The, the, the Godzilla one? Oh, no Cloverfield. One. Yeah, Cloverfield. Cloverfield. She was yeah. in that. She's been oh. in a lot of stuff. Well, she is fantastic. She plays uh, Virginia Masters, and she yeah. is just... Or Johnson. She's just so, 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 so good. And anyway, that's my that's my share. I just think it, it's it's a great show. And if you like good writing and good acting and and great themes um, and stuff that where they're real meticulous about the period, it's just I can't say enough nice things about it. And yeah, I just finished yeah. the the first season last night, and I just loved it. I I've seen a few episodes. Uh, and while it is a Showtime series with tits and ass, um, it is. It, it does characters very, very well. It's very thoughtful. Uh, the few episodes I saw, they touched on other stuff. They touch on issues of the day, like race and stuff. Uh, it, it's it's a really good show. Um, I just haven't watched it. It's just one of those shows where, like, you know, I, you know, I didn't have time or whatever. You know, it no, no, I'm gonna another. tell you. I'm gonna spoiler. I'm gonna say why Dave didn't like it, cause, or not, not why he didn't like it. Why he doesn't watch I, it? Because... I object to nudity. No, <laughs> because when I was I was asking him, I, I said, "Have you seen Masters of Sex? Do you think it's worth watching?" Because I love serialized TV, but I only want to watch something that's really awesome. Because I know that I'm a completist, and once I start, I'm gonna want to keep watching it. And so I was asking him, and he said, "Well," and I could tell there was something he wasn't saying because he had nothing but nice things to say about it, but. I, I didn't I didn't understand why he wasn't watching it if he seemed to like it and he said well I don't know it's I already it's based on real life it's a prequel I know what's gonna happen everybody lives <laughs> like there was no drama for Dave because it actually happened which I think is hilarious that's one of the things that actually makes it more interesting for me no that's you're you're totally misinterpreting that it wasn't that it it's real life and it's actually occurred it's the fact that no one died. <laughs> I, I, I don't like fact based stories because you know I know that there's no way they can tell all of the facts. So it's 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 just 
I don't know. It, it must be the tainted. journalist in me. It, it is. It's tainted. Uh, and 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 I also I I like I like the mystery of not knowing. I already know about uh, Masters and Johnson, and I, I don't know everything. And, and I know a lot of the accounts are like fictionalized and stuff. It, I you know if I want to read if I want history, I want actual history. I don't want a dramatization of it. Uh, that's why I don't watch Lifetime Network. Well, that's why I liked um, Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter because that it was, was true. that was fucking right. authentic as hell. <laughs> uh, so, so, so there you go. I have something cool this week. I have strep throat, so I that's I, pretty I, oh, cool. Oh, that is something awesome. Yeah. <laughs> So I got to sit in the doctor's office for like, what, two and a half hours. Listen for that story on Better Off Undead, I'm sure. <laughs> um, I I do have something, but it, it's kind of um, oblique and just basically plays off of Sean's. But one of the things that I do and, and have been doing even more lately is trying to watch movies based on whatever I'm writing. And not based on, but but in the genre of. Because I want to kind of steep my movie stuff. already? <laughs> I gotta see that. <laughs> well, actually. Well, but I did, do, I did do that with Unicorn Western, though. Not the, not the thing you're joking about, but the thing I, I'm actually talking about. Like, I, I did watch all of those westerns just to get a feel for sort of the, the tropes and the rhythms. And the and, last um, unicorn. And the, in the last... I, I watched a, a documentary on... Uh, Unicorns, no. Um, but but I, I just find that it helps me to kind of steep. It's it's almost like method acting for writing. Like I, I want to kind of pull those things, and and I think that um, that works really well. Uh, so I've been doing more of that. But I mean, what kind of a cool thing is that? It's like really non-specific. Yeah. No. I, no. I I totally agree with that. It, it, I do the same thing, and even when it's only like remotely related. So when I was beating out um, Robot Proletariat Season 2, I watched a, a couple seasons of Downton Abbey, even though there's mm -hmm. like so little, like really, right? But but, but it's, it's the feel, and if yeah. I hadn't already seen a few episodes of Downton Abbey, I would have done the same thing. Yeah, you guys it's, are writing with Lexi, you watch tons fun. of pornography. <laughs> a ton, it's crazy. Yeah, that's I why I watch it. Research. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, here, I, have, I have one more little awesome thing. Um, so I really want to write a screenplay this year, um, and I don't want to like bury myself in a ton of how-to books or anything like that. I, I really just want to do it and, and learn by doing. Um, but I do feel there's a value in reading a lot of screenplays. So I read my very first screenplay this week, um, and it was, uh, and I'm going to watch the movie tonight. So the first screenplay that I ever um, that I chose to, to, it was overwhelming. I didn't know what to choose because I love so many movies, but I went with something that was done by a writer and a director. So the person who wrote it actually directed it. I thought that would be important because I'm really seeing their vision and it had to be a movie that I really liked and that had, I thought a very neat, um, composition. And I chose Jerry Maguire, um, which I, I Oh my God. I just watched Jerry Maguire a few days ago. I'd seen it once when it came out and watched it a few days ago, literally. Oh, how did you like it? On why? Because it's a fantastic movie. No, no, I'm asking Johnny yeah. why. Oh. Because <laughs> it's a fantastic movie. Robin and I, it's hard for us to find movies to agree on. Oh. Yeah, it, it's, it's, I love Cameron Crowe. I think he's a fantastic writer. And um, I just, I love that movie. And so, um, and it was, it was really well written. It's a, it's a romantic comedy that's just done so well. And so, um, so I wanted to read that, that script. So I, I got the PDF and, and I read it. And then tonight I'm going to watch the, um, the actual movie. And I've seen it a bunch of times. So, like it was amazing to me. I could see it in my head while I was reading the, the screenplay, and it's amazing to me how precise that screenplay is. I only Shit, noticed. Uh, what'd you say? Oh, <laughs> yeah, I'll I'll get there. But I wanted something simple, and I knew this was a yeah, hundred twenty page script. script. <laughs> right. This is this follows all the rules. Magnolia follows none of the rules. <laughs> so, um, this was a, a good first one. I I think I'm gonna do Kill Bill one and two next. Or maybe I Reservoir Dogs. I knew, I knew it was going to be a Tarantino night. Well, his scripts are fantastic. Like, I love them. But but Jerry Maguire seemed like a good one. And I think it's going to be a really neat exercise to watch the movie after just finishing the screenplay and really compare it. But in my head, I know the movie pretty well, and in my head I could only spot one difference between the, the script and the actual film. Where everybody oh, was it? it, man? <laughs> Um, no, you know the scene in the in the car with Ray when he's like, "Did you know the human mm -hmm. head weighs eight pounds?" That's that's not in the script. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? Hmm. Yeah. 
must have been an impromptu sort of a thing. You know, speaking of um, Jerry Maguire and Cameron Crowe, um, what would you do if you needed a book cover design? <laughs> <laughs> wow, of all the things. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, the sometimes the mind, the mind works in, in, in... Well, I think that that was it. As I, I think I was thinking about Show Me the Money, and I was thinking about how usually when you go to a designer, that's the first thing they say, Show Me the Money, and you never have enough because it's impossible to get one as an indie because it costs thousands and thousands of dollars. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 not quite. <laughs> it, it is difficult to find a. And then you got to bring out the Quan and you know tell them that they can. <laughs> it's a whole thing. Uh, and then you start thing. arguing, and they say you had me at hello. That, that <laughs> happens to me all the time. Seriously though, uh, book covers. If you if you want a great book cover and you don't know a designer, you have a designer uh, that you want to work with. There's and, nowhere to go. There, there's nowhere to go, and. You, you want it, you want it done quick. You don't, you don't want to wait forever. Well, you've got the the best place in the world. 99designs.com slash SPP. They have. So you say they're quick, Dave. They're they quick. Are, I thought they. I heard that they were really slow and really expensive, and that you could lose everything. <laughs> <laughs> no, they are the opposite of that. They they are built. They are built to deliver. They have. I don't know, zillions of designers? Is that is that possible? <laughs> well, there's got to be at least 99 of them or it doesn't work out. Th th there's a lot of designers. And what you do is you, you have this idea for a book cover. Like, you know, like let's say you wanted the beam and you didn't want it to suck. You, you could have went there. <laughs> 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 you, you have yeah you, you want you want your book cover to to compete with other books in the genre. You want it to look like it belongs, like it's a bestseller. Go to 99designs.com. You tell them what your book is about. You show them some examples. Uh, you don't have to show them examples, but you can. Uh, this is kind of what I'm going for. And then they have. A don't use the beam as an example. Don't use the beam as an example. But then you have a bunch of designers that, that compete to, to, sh to deliver you the best book possible. And you get to choose. You get to choose among a, a ton of great covers. And, and then you can bring your audience in and get them involved and help me pick the best cover. Uh, you can run polls and, and get the audience on board uh, excited about your book because they're part of the process. And the best part is if you, if you don't like any of the covers, you, you have nothing to lose. You don't have to pay. You just walk away, but it's not going to happen. It's, it's never happened to us before. Every time we we've had too many good covers. When we did Dark Crossings, we had like four, three or four different covers. I, I want to do all of these, and Sean's like, "No, we can't do them all." So if you like, want to one. walk out, if you want to walk out, and you feel like you have something to lose, and they're like, "No, no, you got you got nothing to lose. You're able to walk away with no risk." Can, can you can you drop the mic? You can <laughs> drop the mic. <laughs> But yeah, all we, right. We've always all right. Been good, excited, good, happy. <laughs> good. We're so excited. We're talking over each other. So, um, to get your uh, start your custom design uh, today, go to ninety nine designs. Up. Oh, I did that again. St self publishing podcast dot com. No. What? Oh my god! I can't work wow. without my script. <laughs> Ninety. <laughs> don't do any of those things. Do none of those things. Go to 99designs.com slash SPP. And if you use that link, you'll get the free power pack upgrade. I promise, if you use that one, not one of those other ones I started to say, you get the free power pack upgrade, which gives you much more visibility. Uh, gets you, on average, 185% more designs. Yes. And they bold your uh, listing and, and give it a prominent background. And basically, like if you don't do that, then you're just you're not doing it right. You're doing it wrong. You're some sort of subhuman. It's so like holding your definitely do that. Upside down. It is. That is what you're doing. Exactly. All right. I am going to attempt to connect us with um, with Matt Stone, uh, who from Buck Books, and we've had a lot of initial success with Buck Books. Um, uh, with uh, we we did a promo for what was the one that we did originally? It was the Futurist Sex promo, and then we redid another one for that's the. That's where beam. we got the Paleo, <laughs> also bots. And that's where we got the Paleo, also bots. So this is a little clumsy because I'm going to contact uh, Matt via Skype, and we don't normally do that. So normally we do a. Did Johnny freeze? Hang out fully. You guys are yeah, just yeah. kind of have to suffer through it. <clears throat> so I'm going to go ahead and do this, and I'm going to turn up. Hopefully you guys aren't getting feedback. 
from you guys. Whoa. Is is it, is it bad feedback? No, it's just loud. We're good. All right. I like it because it's like a call in. We get the. This reminds the audio. me of trying to call my mom on VOU. You there, Matt? You there, Matt? I'm I'm in the house. What's happening? Yo yo, oh. what up? <laughs> Fantastic! Hello. This is awesome. Getting my little headphones set up and all that stuff. Okay, now I'm really ready. It's it's all on right. now. For real. All right. Well, I introduced you as Matt Stone because you said I could do that. Um, because I don't think that anybody was gonna buy that you were really named Buck Flogging. Yeah, I was uh, gonna call <laughs> bullshit on that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Buck Flogging is uh, you know just a poorly concealed pen name and uh, one that I'm I'm quite proud of. He's his accomplishments far exceed my own, but uh, yeah, I'm I'm more than willing to be Matt Stone, even though you know Buck's clearly the the, the elephant in the room. So no, that's speaking. Me. <laughs> so Buck Books is at um, buckbooks. It is dot com, right? I probably should have looked. It, it's it's dot, dot net. Dot net. Um, obviously, that was a financial concern. Um, yeah, we have, tried, we feel your pain. We're all dot nets all over the place. <laughs> yeah, I didn't. I didn't want to spend like five figures to obtain that website address when I could get buckbooks. dot net for about I don't know twenty bucks. I think I paid for that. So anyway, it is .net. Maybe someday when we're take the world over, we can switch over to buckbooks.com. But yeah, .net for for now. So you're using a um, it, it's a it's a bookbub style model. It's it's email subscription. You're gathering um, readers uh, and um, then advertisers, which uh, it's currently a closed program uh, for advertising. And I, I believe you said you're going to open that up later. But for now, it's like you're gathering lists of readers and you're trying to do the you are doing the the bookbub model where you 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 gather the list and then you have access to all these people that want to read. Yeah, it's it's a similar model. It's definitely partially inspired by bookbub, and you know we get daily deals that we broadcast out to our email subscribers, just like bookbub does. Uh, a few things that we do different. We have events and other creative things that we're going to be adding. Uh, we're actually going to sell audiobooks if we can get approved for micropayments. That's taking forever. I don't want to pay 33 cents for every $1 transaction. So we're once we get that figured out, we're actually going to sell $1 audiobooks. Um, and, and then we'll have you know some other things going on in the, in the future, um, such as featured publisher, featured author, things that BookBub doesn't offer. And the biggest differentiator, of course, is that we don't charge exorbitant amounts to authors for promotion. Uh, we charge zero to both authors and publishers alike for promotion, and that's definitely the biggest the biggest difference between us and BookBub. That and the fact that they're huge, but we're, we're gaining on them quickly. So, <laughs> right. so uh, we did our first BookBooks promo was one where y you featured a number of our titles. Um, I don't remember watching the stats on that day, but I did watch them when you promoted Lexi's title, Future of Sex, and it was, it was, it was quite good. I don't remember the exact figures, but I remember going, "Wow, like Buck Books got some balls on him." Like it, you know, it definitely moved the needle on that. And so, um, although this is probably all a little bit of a cock tease because you aren't accepting new subscribers right now, so what do you have to say to all the people who are pissed off <laughs> listening? <laughs> hey, there's this great new service. You can't uh, use it. Fuck you, uh, authors. We we'll accept anybody as a subscriber. We're not. Um, we're not accepting. I mean, we do accept submissions as well. We just hide it because we get absolutely bombarded. You can imagine it's a free book promotion service, and um, you know everybody that uh, has completed uh, an, an English course and thinks that they're a writer is submitting <laughs> to us for promotion, and we have to be very selective. And that's probably that trend's obviously not going to change as we get bigger. It's going to become even more and more competitive to get a promotion. But um, you know, we're looking to build relationships with authors, authors who like us are willing to to promote and and do things for us. And uh, I mean, fact of the matter is, is it, it probably will become more like a a club in the future that you're either in or not in. And I hate to be that way, but that's the cost of offering free promotion to authors. Um, so that's the story with that. Um, but yeah, we, we're st still like, accepting subscribers. So what, come um, on over. But but how do you? And and I I probably should clear this ahead of time. Um, 
because I'm just I'm just trying to think now because I, I may be putting you on the spot, right? So um, I'm just thinking of somebody listening to this, like, do, how do how do we get in? Do do we, we not for kill. now? And wait until right. How, how do we wait to kill? How do we how do we combat the Dave like angst that we're not in the club? Um, hope I'm not. Well, I mean, we're really looking for only two things. Um, we're looking for great books so that our subscribers feel like they're getting an incredible value um, and so that we keep our subscribers because we don't want to be promoting bad books to them and then they get it and go, wow, I only paid 99 cents to waste 10 hours of my time reading this horrible book. Um, you know, we want to give them the best of the best and stuff that's usually priced a lot higher and stuff that's high demand. Um, and we need to get subscribers in so that we can continue to grow. That benefits us, but it, it benefits every single author that will ever get promoted through Buck Books from now until the end of time. So, um, you know, we're looking to create relationships with people who have the ability to promote, um, but the quality of the book can trump all that. So, uh, and, and by quality, I don't necessarily mean that we look at every book and we read it cover to cover and go, oh, that was a great book. I think we'll promote that. I mean, how our our subscribers are going to perceive that value. So, you know, so it's a conversion it's, thing too, right? So things like book covers and got lots and lots of reviews, um, or if it's just about a subject matter that we know our subscribers, uh, you know, go crazy for whenever we promote, then we'll definitely be willing to promote a book, even if we don't get a single subscriber in return for that promotion. So that that's kind of how it works and. You know, I, I, a lot of authors probably will be left out, but at the same time, I am very pro indie, and it won't be the kind of party where the publishing companies take over. Um, I still want to be promoting the best indie authors in favor of what's coming out of the big publishers. Go, go ahead, Sean. What you were saying? Um, oh, well, I was just talking about. I think from from where you're coming from, it's it's almost a conversion thing, right? So uh, a, a book that is a well-written masterpiece isn't necessarily a home run for you because it, it needs to have the right product description and it needs to have a cover that's going to excite your subscribers. I mean, at, at, at that point, you're more about making sure that the people who open the email are excited to continue opening your emails, right? That, that they see, okay, well, this book is relevant to me. So the the good stuff by that definition is stuff that is highly relevant to your existing audience i imagine yeah highly relevant to them and and uh, you know uh, we watch sales stats and ranking stats and how those change on everything that we promote and we can see you know just based on a book's listing uh title cover subject matter genre um book description reviews you know, we can look at all those things and make a pretty good assessment about how the subscribers are going to respond to that. And we, of course, are going to be always paying attention to that on an ongoing basis and trying to put the biggest crowd pleasers in front of, uh, of our subscribers as possible, whether they're by somebody willing to send us some subscribers in exchange for that promotion or not. We have to keep our subscribers happy. That's a big part of having success down the line with what we're doing. So, Matt, I've titled this um, episode What Readers Really Want. So hopefully what you just said sort of uh, segues into that. What are you finding about reader preferences and what does tend to convert and what people do tend to want? Well, speaking back, and I, I wanted to touch on this when you guys talked about the promotions that you did with us. Um, right now, our subscribers don't like fiction as much as nonfiction, and that's because of how we've obtained those subscribers. So what we do is we put on events. <clears throat> Our biggest event that we've done, for example, was a, a paleo diet event, non-fiction, <laughs> obviously. And, um, and we got all the big names in the paleo world, the bloggers, the big authors. We got all these books that are normally $9.99, dropped to $0.99. Cents. And we got tons of people over um, to check this event out. And we gathered up 16,000 subscribers. You frozen for anybody, or is it Johnny's end? I think it might be Johnny's end. I think he may be still hearing it, and we're out. Great. <laughs> this is very exciting. Um, 
I don't know what to do because. Welcome to the Sean and Dave uh, side broadcast. <laughs> do you want to have a story meeting? <laughs> <laughs> well, this is on YouTube. Uh, um, well, Johnny, if he's still recording, will be on the live audio feed, so that should be fine. Well, that's good. I'm glad that's protected. Should we drop out and come back in, maybe? No, we should wait for Johnny to come back. We should just sit here and stare at one another and our audience. Oh. Let's talk. I wish we could have a story meeting. I right, here. All right, I'm going to tell you about a book that I just started. Um, okay. We are on air. That's fine. What okay. what, right. what else are we supposed to do? Yeah, if you're going to re- tell me about some book you hated or something. Okay, no. Wait, Johnny's, Johnny's back. Right Maybe. <laughs> this show is awesome. The most professional show ever. Uh, Why is this so slow? Are you still on with Matt? Uh, actually, Matt got disconnected too. It's like my internet was gone for a second. I can't see you guys. Um, hey, YouTube, I stopped recording the audio a while ago, but I can't see you guys. Yeah, Sean was guys, about to take a see me? Yeah, we can yeah, see we, a we can, version of you. We just see your unicorn. No, okay. no, I see you now. I see you. Okay, there we go. And, and I don't. Matt, I you still can... just see your unicorn. I'm uh, good. Now I see you. You're now the Skype gods or who or whatever just happened. Um, yeah, hopefully that's over. All right, so I'm going to resume this, and then you can continue uh, answering that question. Okay, so sorry about that, everybody. It just got cut off, and um, Matt got cut off, too. So everybody got cut off. Um, but you were answering about how you got um, 16,000 subscribers in, and then that it was where it got cut off. Yeah, it was through a paleo event. So these subscribers, by virtue of the fact that they came in interested in the paleo event, are people interested more in nonfiction than fiction. Now, of course, some people read paleo diet books and fiction. Um, so, you know, it wasn't like we can't sell any fiction at all, but just by virtue of how we've gathered these subscribers so far, we've done 12 nonfiction events. So our subscriber base is way more interested in nonfiction currently, but that's all going to change because we're launching our fiction side in early April and that's going to go on to actually be a lot more popular than nonfiction, I suspect, because we're going to ramp that up huge, and it will be a very, very viable platform for authors to promote their books, and we're going to be accepting and promoting a lot of books, probably at least 15 fiction books a day. So it'll be a good place to, to be seen, and uh, it'll all still be free, just like it is now. I now, am is super... Is this a separate mailing list or a separate website? We're going to keep it all together. I know segmentation of lists is a big thing that uh, that people are adamant about doing. I kind of like having almost like a big newsletter that we send out. It simplifies things for us tremendously, and we can say, here's today's fiction books and here's today's nonfiction books. The fiction event today is science fiction or mysteries or romance or whatever it may be. The nonfiction event is self-confidence or paleo diet or whatever it might be that day and um, and then we have a few extra little you know things for them to play around with besides that now how much how, how is this tied into uh, the publishing company you work with is it in what Archangel Inc or something hello do we lose him again? Good lord. <laughs> oh, Johnny's frozen, so we lost both of them again. Man, this uh. show works. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. So, um, yeah. Awesome. Um, all right, so I'm going to tell you about this book. <laughs> all right. And it's a book I no, I, I don't hate it at all. I like it, and I think you'll you you dig the concepts in it. So Haley Haley asked me to read it. Um, I also just finished Monstrous, and remind me to talk to you about that later. <laughs> um, Wait, did Haley read Monstrous? No, and she's not allowed to. <laughs> <laughs> Why no, not? and I actually I actually had to go in her room and take it out because she Oh, took it. you censoring bastard! No, I'll let her at some point. It's just, it's a little too early. Like, there's... A minute to her. <laughs> There's just uh, uh, well, you have to buy it on Amazon because we don't actually own the rights. <laughs> I think I can afford it. 
So, um, uh, no, it's this book called Unwind. Oh, man, I keep getting my my story. I think I have Unwind. It's one of those books I bought and haven't read. <laughs> are you there? Are you there? <laughs> oh, we're here. <laughs> okay, good. God damn. Uh, Best right. show ever. I know, right? Well, the audio won't be too bad, but YouTube sucks. Sorry, guys. Well, YouTube is used to us sucking. So. Yeah, they are used to us sucking. You're getting the behind the scenes. All right, so let me resume that one more time. <clears throat> All right, so sorry for the second time, everybody. Um, I was just <laughs> going to say that I'm really pretty, like I'm newly impressed that we got the results we did if your list trends towards nonfiction anyway, because obviously we've been featured three times and it's only been fiction and it's performed well each time. So apparently your theory about nonfiction people reading fiction is true. Yeah, well just in comparison to nonfiction books that we promote, the nonfiction books perform a lot better, but we're still getting some performance out of our fiction books and we still are getting uh, you know, some results there, but it's going to reverse itself probably by the end of 2015 and, and the big party will be at fiction and our fiction books will probably perform quite a bit better than nonfiction. There's fiction readers and fiction readers are notoriously more voracious and in, in the quantity of books that they consume as well. And once we can attract them and let them know about buck books, then it'll be, it'll be a party. What yeah, do you, no, go ahead. I, I had a quick, I got cut off before. Uh, how did uh, Buck Books come to be? Because it looks like uh, you guys are uh, part of, I, I forget the name of the publisher, Archangel Inc. or something. Did you guys yeah, like right. decide, we can't we can't you know get featured in Book Club all the time. We ought to start our own damn promotion site. Because that's a thought I think a lot of people have had. Is that sort of how it came to be? Yeah, it's. Um, I'll tell you the quick quickest version that I can tell you. But basically, I've been blogging for a long time. I wrote books. I sold them every way you could possibly sell them. Had affiliate programs, ClickBank. Um, I sold books everywhere, PDFs on my site, and and I hired somebody, my partner named Rob Archangel. That's his real name. Wow, <laughs> that's like oh, the best hell. name ever. Dave's so yeah. jealous. Is he a wrestler? <laughs> Does he have an English accent? Because Dave wants to get married right now. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't have an English accent. He is from Brooklyn and has no Brooklyn accent. He's like. Completely devoid of accent. I don't know what happened to this kid, but um, but yeah, he's he's awesome. And you know, he he moved down to where I live. We're we're great friends now. But you know, long story short is he helped me get onto Amazon, Create Space, audiobook, all those things. And even though we weren't necessarily making more money doing that as opposed to what we're doing in the past, it's a lot more fun. And it feels a lot more fun to be able to publicly compete in Amazon and show all your reviews. And it's just a lot more fun than being a sort of a secretive um, download my 1995 PDF and all this kind of stuff. And ClickBank is, I just don't like the vibe of ClickBank, whatever. That's what we do now. And, and Rob learned how to do all these things, got good at it. We learned a lot. And we decided, hey, man, this is, this is a great service. We should... Uh, you know, we should launch your own business. You could be a publishing help guy. So we did that, and um, we started, you know, basically realizing that we needed a way to market the books. Um, and and so I, I was hard pressed to figure out something and, and a way to do that. So Buck Books was born. It was like it went from idea to actually happening in like a week. Um, <laughs> Yeah, it was it was crazy. Sounds now familiar. I have a lot of experience, and I've seen a lot of people um, do a lot of things on the internet successfully, and I have a lot of great contacts that I built over the years. So that was the advantage that I had, and what uh, allowed us to basically hit the ground running and get you know a couple thousand subscribers on our first day, and um, you know we sent several books into the top fifty in the entire Kindle store with our first event, and um, you know I just started with a bang and. It's really picking up steam now. I mean, it's it's wild, and uh, this year alone is going to be, um, yeah, we're we're going to become a lot more relevant really soon, especially when we launch the fiction side. Well, I'm glad we know you. <laughs> yeah, hey, you guys are part of the club now. The um, what are you what are you seeing in terms? So you, you said that right now people are more um, nonfiction than fiction. That's going to change and all that. But what are you seeing kind of converts with? The, I mean, either nonfiction or fiction. Like, what are what are some trends that people might be able to take away in terms of uh, 
great covers or great blurbs or the things that are getting clicks and sales. Well, this is, I mean, this is what I love about doing this because I've seen hundreds of books come through. I've seen how they perform to the audience, and I feel like I've gotten this incredible education about what makes a book listing successful in order for people to respond and buy higher quantities of it. Um, to me, I think the biggest is, you know, I know you guys are, are fiction focused, although you've had just as much success with nonfiction, really, with Write, Publish, Repeat and your box set that you did and some other things that you got going on. But um, I would say the biggest is, honestly, is probably subject matter uh, or genre because that would be, um, you know, this is really a general audience and it's going to become increasingly diversified over time. So the more crowd-pleasing it is, the more high percentage, you know, I use all the time the silly example of, of a book about raising seahorses as the ultimate non-seller. So the, the ultimate niche topic that's very specific is not going to perform very well. Now that doesn't mean you can't be successful with a book like that because there's always an audience and sometimes the smaller the audience, the easier it is to find those people and market the book in creative ways. But as far as what's selling, I think those big crowd pleaser type of nonfiction topics like um, books that help you look better, make more money, you know, some of those real core human desire type of things. Those books are very successful. In terms of fiction, um, it's a little too early to tell. Right now, I notice, one thing I've noticed is that reviews on fiction books are a lot more important than they are on nonfiction. So subject matter seems to be more important for nonfiction. The, that, 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 that's you, super true with, with me true. as a buyer. Uh, that's always the truth. If, it, if it's a nonfiction book, I need that answer. And reviews matter, but with with fiction, it's an experience. And if a lot of people didn't like it, I'm I'm inclined to think, ah, maybe not. That that makes perfect sense. Yeah, fiction is a big time investment. You have to. The books are longer. You want to make sure before you buy. Not it's not even about the price. You want to make sure that you're not going to spend. 10 hours of your life in a story that is <laughs> empty in the end and makes you feel let down. The last thing you want to Unless do is Unless that's a uh, collective in inquiry title and you're looking for that. <laughs> are there yeah. things that you're seeing that are the opposite rather than yeah. things that always convert? Are you seeing things that never convert? Like this is something you absolutely don't do because people don't click on this kind of book or this kind of cover or this kind of product description. Well, I would say anything with fewer than 10 reviews in fiction is, uh, you know, unless they're all five stars, every single one of them is, is pretty much unmarketable um, to, our, to our list at least. Uh, so it, that's just a real, it's crippling for a book to be so unestablished like that. And that's, you guys have written so much about the importance of connecting with your core readers and your core fans and building great loyalty with them, giving them all kinds of stuff for free. I mean, you guys do a great job of getting those early reviews and getting established. I think in fiction, I'm seeing that that is more important. And in fiction, so few authors are actually building a good base of their core fans and followers. It's a huge business advantage and marketing advantage in the fiction world to do any of that because most fiction authors, they're just not, they're not really doing much in the way of establishing that at all and, and being able to communicate with those loyal readers when they release something new and get those early reviews and that, those early downloads. Um, I have something I wanted to ask you about. So this is actually one of the first things that... Uh, because I think Dave made contact with somebody at BookBooks first, and this is one of the things Dave was mentioned first. Um, and I'm just wondering, it as a as a as a click, you know, a clickbait sort of a thing or curiosity triggers. You do these blind items rather than like here. Oh, and by the way, like just to see how BookBooks is doing it, and just because they're awesome, like you should go sign up and see these emails that go out because I haven't even gotten to buck flogging yet, but. What what are you finding about the blind items? First of all, why did you decide to do that? Like, why, why blind items rather than saying, here's the book we have, here is the description. It's like, well, it makes you fucking click, man. <laughs> well, first of all, if you, you know, the main reason, of course, is that we, we monetize a site based on Amazon Associates affiliate program. 
that's probably 70, 75% of the revenue that the site generates. And it's really important that we get people to click on our affiliate links so that we can get uh, a percentage of everything that they buy on Amazon. That's how the site makes money. That's what fuels our affiliate program. That's what en enables us to not charge authors anything. It's really, really important. Secondly, just from an author's standpoint, I mean, I think you, I think it's much better for somebody to be looking at your listing on Amazon and make the decision of whether they want to purchase that book or not there than it is in an email. So it just gets them one step closer to executing that purchase. And yes, a few subscribers have complained, you know, why don't you just show pictures of the books and stuff like that. But honestly, I, I, that's not where I want people to make the decision about whether or not they want to buy that book. I want them seeing the listing. I want them to see the book description. I want them to see all those reviews. Uh, I want to take advantage of, of Amazon and how easy when that when that button that you have to click is visible on your screen when you go to you know actually look at the book listing. So that's that's kind of why we do it in the, the clickbait format. That's that's a great um, point on that too is the whole and it's that um, that that the, the sliding thing with, with yes, once somebody said yes once by clicking a link, they're more inclined to say yes the second time. And why would you try and sell the book in the email when everybody's already, they've already done that on Amazon? So that's, that's well, pretty interesting. My, my, my question is if, 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 you, if you're doing the blind items, I, I understand why you do it. And, and it's easy to do, like the way you guys are doing it, you're doing like maybe five, six, seven books or something. But if you start doing like 15 books, like you said, with fiction, that that click through is gonna drop off quite a bit, don't you think? Uh, are you gonna change that well, up at all? <laughs> we have se several separate things, right? So events are really separate from our daily featured books. So again, that's one thing that, that differentiates us from BookBub because BookBub they send stuff out in emails. That's pretty much end of story. With the events. We actually host events on the site, and our subscribers are only a fraction of the people that show up to see the books that are in that event. The other people that come over are people that our authors send over that are participating in that event. So if you wrote a book about uh, a science fiction book, for example, and you're going to be in there with 14 other authors of 14 other science fiction books with 14 other email lists of fans, and then all 15 of those authors send people over to the same page at the same day uh, to get that cross exposure. There, everybody showing up is going to be interested in science fiction because if you're in, interested in science fiction author A, you're probably going to be interested in science fiction author B, C, D, E, F, and so forth. Um, and then we have affiliates that promote uh, as well. So we have over a thousand affiliates who, you know, maybe it's not appropriate if they're they blog about the paleo diet to send people over to science fiction event, but we will get some regular folks in who have websites that are related somehow and they can promote those events directly. Our events currently are actually performing better than our featured books in our email broadcast. So even though there's 15 of them, um, I mean, we've had incredible results. We sent a book all the way to number one in the Kindle store. We've sent 30 books into the top 100 already through our events and like I said we've only done 12 so those work out really well uh, one event we even had 47,000 hits on the page on the day of the event I mean it's just wild so that's how that works and it's not as watered down as you would think because it's not just the subscribers that are going over to check that out on the day of the event now, uh, John, Johnny had mentioned uh, how, how we'd come to find out about you. I forget what the event was, uh, but there, there was something where we were, I think it was that thing we were doing. Uh, it like, was the Facebook event. Yeah, the Facebook event, and we, we were talking uh, to, to readers and stuff, and a bunch of people were posting questions on there. We were answering them, and somebody mentioned, uh, you know, they, they were complaining about the uh, – ability to get ads and where else can you get ads and stuff and some an, an author uh, was saying buck books is awesome and stuff and he, he was doing it in a way that was like 
uh, shut off my spam alert, actually. I was like, why does this guy keep mentioning Buck Books? I Buck remember Books? this. <laughs> I was like, is, is this guy affiliated with Buck Books? Because he was talking on such glowing terms. And, like, I asked in a roundabout way, and eventually he said, yeah, he was. So I said, okay. And he was like, yeah, Buck Books is, you know, they're, they're going to be uh, the next uh, book bub or whatever. Just in such glowing terms, like, okay, this guy's full of shit. So uh, immediately, because you know how I am. So <laughs> I, I go to the book, uh, Buck Books website, and I'm like, I can't even figure out how to fucking submit to a goddamn thing. So I was really pissed off. So somehow, like, uh, I don't remember. Yeah. I was I was Googling and shit, and I, I found some way to get a hold of you guys. I'm like, uh, what the hell is the deal here? Uh, so I asked, and uh, basically they said, you know, they're, they're not really building uh, their their authors right now. They're, they're building the readership list side of it first. And... Um, they, yeah, they, they, they liked our stuff, and they'd be happy to feature us. I said, okay, so I'll, I'll see if the proof is in the pudding and wait and see what happens. And uh, we, we, we ran something. I, uh, I forget the, the first thing we did. Uh, and, and it went well, and I was, you know, I was like, okay, it worked. So, And the price yeah, was think, right, too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, think, I think the first person that, that reached out was Michael, and Michael is from Poland. And uh, sometimes his communication is a little awkward, and uh, but he's he's such a great guy. He's very persistent, and he was sending me screenshots like, "Oh, I, I, I'm I'm getting you know David Wright interested in Buck Books." And oh, like, that's not good. <laughs> yeah. then, then you actually follow through and contact Stephen, and then from that point on, you guys are helpless because Stephen just completely uh, honey dicked you with his his giant. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so perfect segue, and this this does need to be the last bit because we have a we have a, a thing we got to get to right at four thirty, and we have Bou first. But um, I do want to ask you. So after the honey dick comment, of course, um, <laughs> if I mean, first of all, go go to buckbooks.net and sign up if for no other reason than to see the emails because um, oh, I know what this is. <laughs> you, have a, you have a character, and his name is Buck Flogging. Which already sounds <laughs> masturbatory. Like I know it's it's you know you transposed buck blogging and all this stuff, but it's like it sounds like you're flogging, right? And um, he's, he's <laughs> like in a pimp chair with some woman behind him. And my favorite comment in I don't know whether Steve said it or you said it in um, said that you got an email that somebody was like, uh, Buck, I'd click on more of your links if your emails weren't so creepy. <laughs> <laughs> So, but apparently that works for you, right? So I, I kind of like the tribe trimming aspect of this. Like, yeah, we're not going to be like like BookBub. Like BookBub is not using buck flogging, but it's working. <laughs> well, here's the thing. I hate anonymous commercial solicitations, right? It just comes from an entity. It feels corporate. It's not fun. And everybody always connects more with an individual, even if that individual is completely fake. Uh, <laughs> but I will have you know that a lot of people do not think that Buck is fake. He mentioned something about... Um, <laughs> he mentioned something about how hairy Mrs. Mrs. Buck is. And uh, all, these, all these women were writing... <laughs> Oh, this is from this is from this condition, and really should be on a low carb diet or this and that. This is oh hilarious. my god! <laughs> yeah, that yeah, book is great. Can we Buck talk is... about the uh, the recipe book? Oh my god! Is yeah, that, are we allowed to talk about that because that was a funny exchange too. Yeah, you can you can talk about whatever you want. It's nothing is sacred in Buck's world. <laughs> well, I didn't remember, um, I don't remember how it, it it but it's like one of those things like you, you kind of when you're new to somebody you feel them out and you're on your best behavior and so you know like we were professional like the first time Dave contacted me was a pro and we were all being pro and then at the <laughs> tipping point during this email exchange we realized that these guys are as depraved as we are and so Steve <laughs> sent over a cover of a cookbook. And it had a chicken on it. Or, I'm sorry, not a chicken, a rooster. And it was a chicken cookbook, and the title was How to Eat Cock, which is like the best cookbook title ever. Got it from my grandma. You know, you know, fuck, you know how fucked up Stephen is. I don't, I don't know. I'm so glad I found this guy because he is he is so funny. Like what I, The original vision I had for Buck was funny, but he took it up like four notches. And he actually sent me that book in in paperback as a Christmas gift. That's how, <laughs> how wrong we're 
guy is. And I pay him like <laughs> basically nothing. Um, I pay him a little bit to do all the stuff that he does, and he, he just insisted that I mention you know the giant size of his geni- his genitals. And that's really all the payment that he requires, in addition to the you know few nickels that I send his way. So you know I don't know where I found this guy, but he's he's amazing. Um, all right, well I, I just oh. gonna do one quick comment. Roland Denzel said you built some build up some trust on the blind items. At first I rolled my eyes, but now I trust you uh, mostly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we we um we we do need to wrap up. I could keep talking t- to you, Matt, but we'll have to move that offline where you can send us more off-color um uh, book titles. <laughs> That'd be great. Book That'd be great. So um, thanks to everybody. Uh, thanks, Matt. Thank you. Everybody, check out BuckBooks.net. Um, great bunch of guys, as far as we can tell. Maybe they're just fooling us all, but for for now, <laughs> we like them. <laughs> Um, Thanks, guys. Take care. All right. Thanks for being with us, Matt. Everybody check out buckbooks.net, and we will see you next week. Bye.